Hello, everyone. Good morning. We today have our rock stars, Sai and Streaming, the rock stars of obviously the ATD and the ATM test distribution. They will be giving us a demo on harnessing uh, and building an open source uh, framework. With that, I'll just start giving it over to Sai and Streaming. Over to you guys. So today, um... As a title says, we're going to talk about uh, how we actually, uh, you know, built a device farm uh, and completely harnessing the open source solutions. Before we jump in, a quick intro about us. Uh, my name is Sai and I work for ThoughtWorks as a principal consultant. Uh, and uh, also, you know, I'm an active contributor to open source uh, and public speaking in a lot of conferences. And also an active uh, member and a contributor to uh, Appium as well. Uh, yeah, Srini, over to you. Hi, everyone. I am Srini, Appium member and maintainer of Appium. And I've contributed to quite a few other open source repositories, including Selenium, WebDriver.io, Taiko, and a lot more. I'm a speaker as well. And uh, I do uh, write blogs occasionally. And that's me. And agenda for today uh, is uh, we'll discuss about the challenges that we have in building a device form, then how we have leveraged open source solutions that are available in market to build a device form, and uh, probably also a deep dive on the demo, which is a real demo. Uh, hopefully everything goes well. And so uh, like Srini said, right, so we're going to talk a lot about the device farm. So let's talk about problem statements, right? So when we wanted to sort of uh, build an in-house device farm, uh, so there were a few challenges to it. And and some of them could be, uh, you know, like, a, you know, we thought, what, what are the certain challenges that we see, right? So one is uh, we thought, okay, we want to make sure that, uh, you know, be able to cater to uh, diverse devices connected to the farm. And uh, just not for uh, manual testing, but also it should be supported for automated testing. So we started to, you know, make sure how you want to distribute uh, or parallelize your tests, right? And also session management, which is very, very important uh, because uh, uh, each of your uh, sessions should not override with an another one. Otherwise, you're going to mess up with your uh, client scripts. And of course, uh, reporting and live testing, right? So we'll come to the part of live testing and reporting. Of course, you could think like, oh, what's so great about reporting and, and things, right? Because if you have a lot of reports available uh, in the market today. Uh, but when it comes to a mobile space, so there are certain attributes that you really want, certain information that you want for further debugging is very different to what we have, right? When you want to tag that to your, uh, to your uh, report. So that's where a customized reporting was very much needed because of this information getting missed out, right? And when we're talking about distributed test and initially when me and Srini came up with the solution, we thought, hey, okay, uh, I think this was more on Appium 1 uh, when it was on Appium 1 stages. Uh, so we started to build the solution on the client side, right? Because Appium is client server architecture. So we started to build the solution on a client side and, you know, we came up with the solution from a Java binding perspective. So we called, you know, it was, it was ATD. And then with ATD, uh, you know, we focused on, you know, test ng as a runner. So it was more very client uh, specific, right? Uh, and uh, and with that, then uh, I think on top of ATD, there was another framework which was built called as TestVis by Anand because we were supporting test ng. And so, you know, Anand came forward to say that, okay, I'm going to test Cucumber, right? So that is how as a community, you know, we help each other and we grew. And now came the actual problem is we started to think that, hey, whatever we are building, can only be used to people uh, who are going to use Java bindings, right? So what happens if someone wants to use Python, Ruby, or any other language that you wanted? Uh, and uh, that's when at the right time, uh, we had Appium 2.0 coming into a play where it was a complete de uh, the complete re-arc where it brought in the superpowers of Appium with a plugin and a driver concepts, right? And I thought okay, then me and Srini thought like, okay, this is the time for us to, you know, do what we wanted to do is just not stick to one specific binding, but this should be, you know, this entire stuff should go towards a server, right? A meaning you will have to, it should become, uh, you know, language agnostic. So that's something what we really thought about that we need to uh, cater and, and solve, right? Let's see that, uh, how did we solve this problem? Uh, by completely leveraging all the open source solutions that we have today, right? Uh, and uh, we'll talk about some of the challenges and we'll just not only talk about how we did, but we'll also talk about some tools, what was our approach taken and how did we do it, right? So we, we'll deep dive and some of the important factors that we considered uh, initially when we were brainstorming. So Srini, the first thing that when it comes uh, is a device management or a session management, right? 
So when we talk about device management, uh, you know, you typically have your devices and you want to, you know, maintain them and make sure your devices are good and health. There are a lot of information that you need from a device. And also when it comes to session management, which is tied to your automation, uh, you also need to make sure that uh, your sessions are safe. They are locked. They don't bump on each other, right? How did we manage or how did we, what approach we took to solve this problem, Srini? Yeah, uh, in terms of device management, uh, we need to have uh, a collection or a pool of devices that are uh, connected to my Mac or Windows host. So first problem statement within it is uh, getting those devices and then classifying whether it is Android, iOS, which platform it is. And then we also have to get some characteristics of about, uh, characteristics of those devices. Uh, brand, manufacturer, and other details about those devices. So the first thing that comes on top of everyone's mind when we say, uh, I would like to know list of Android devices connected to my Mac or Windows is ADB commands. So ADB devices will get me a list of devices connected and the state of those devices. So in order to get the characteristics of device, uh, each and every device that we have, uh, we can leverage uh, APM's ADB module. So instead of reinventing the wheel, what we have done is basically leveraging those modules to get uh, all the information uh, possible from uh, the device itself through APM's ADB module. And now comes the iOS part. So we also need to understand what all simulators I have in my local if I have uh, Mac host. So Xeran Sim CTL list is the command that comes on top of everyone's mind. And for iOS, uh, we need to also get uh, all the characteristics of real devices and uh, UDIDs of those devices so that we can have a pool of uh, pool of devices and they're classified over different platforms so that it can be managed well when there is a session request comes in place. So uh, basically ensuring that there is only one device that gets always uh, one session uh, whenever requested. So device management works this way. So we leverage all the open source modules. One is the APM ADB, Xeran Sim CTL list, and uh, some of the modules from uh, APM Sexy Y driver to get, uh, I mean, to manage those sessions as well. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I mean, it's just not about devices just connected to the local, right? So what if you have devices connected to your remote machine, right? Meaning that you know, within your uh, closed network, uh, you have multiple devices, which is just not connected to one machine, but, you know, probably the machine is sitting somewhere else, right? Uh, in, in those cases, what was our approach? Really? How did we handle this? And the first thing that comes on top of everyone's mind when we talk about uh, local and remote is uh, Selenium Grid where we have one device or one machine acts as a hub and another machine acts as the node. So again, we inspired the concept of the hub and node uh, completely from Selenium Grid. And we utilized, uh, so basically what we have talked about on one Mac host, we have so many devices connected. So use APM ADB and other uh, node modules to gather devices and uh, shell commands to get all the properties of those devices in terms of Android and uh, uh, modules for iOS as well, uh, APM iOS device module for iOS as well. So we thought about repeating the same on Hub uh, and Node. So Hub will have its own set of devices, Node will have its own set of devices. Node periodically uh, kind of uh, ensures that it shares this information to Hub. So uh, the main part here is that uh, somebody can unplug the device for some case and somebody can plug in a new device for a, on a remote device or local device. So it has to be periodically updated and periodically validated what kind of devices I have, whether it is on Hub or it's on Node. So this has to be dynamically happening. And we also have to have this everything in a centralized place so that uh, Hub and Node can be uh, communicated seamlessly. Okay, okay. And uh, Srini, the interesting part is you said that, uh, you know, uh, we 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 got inspired by Selenium Hub, right? So we all know that Selenium Grid itself uh, supports, uh, uh, you know, um, running your Appium test or even with Appium two, right? I mean, uh, why don't why we didn't go with Selenium's uh, Grid concept? Why we went ahead and got inspired by it and we built another one? Yeah, so um, uh, Selenium Grid is a wonderful product. There's no doubt on that. 
and uh, it does support sapm 2.0 and uh, there's no doubts around those as well but what we wanted to build is uh, uh, something more than what selenium grid offers right so we have to get this information about those devices dynamically we have to get what is uh, getting unplugged what is getting plugged in dynamically when there is sessions running on for example when there are automated tests running on on particular devices on remote we also need to gather the details about those uh, dynamically and apart from these we also have talked about live testing and other problem statement so uh yeah, that's when we thought, okay, it's something a bit more than what Selenium Grid offers. So uh, we still utilized all the open source modules that are available in market to build uh, uh, or solve all of these capabilities eventually. Yeah, yeah. And also with that said, uh, one of the other biggest challenges that we have seen this entire uh, eco ecosystem is about code signing from Apple, right? So uh, given that the WebDriver agent needs to be on your device and your app, your app signatures and stuff, right? So this was always this is this has always been a pain, right? It's not doable, but this has been always a pain because there are so many Xcode commands happening. There are too many capabilities and things, right? So as a part of our solution, which we have considered to solve even this pattern, uh, you do you want to add like what was our approach of solving this entire code signing stream? Yeah, that's one of the toughest problem or eventually uh, quite a lot of people uh, in the community face, which is code signing, web driver agent, uh, using the uh, provisioning profile that we use for uh, uh, testing, uh, the application under test and the bundle ID, probably a different bundle ID has to be picked. So this is a complex problem statement and uh, eventually every, uh, every uh, now and then we also will get Web driver agent new version from Appium after since we have forked and it's been four for the four plus years that we are Appium uh, teams um, Appium team is maintaining the web driver agent. So that's when we reached out to our community when we have faced issues in building the application on Xcode 15, iOS 17. Uh, I mean, uh, building the web driver agent with Xcode 15 and 17. And Kazoo was kind enough to uh, make changes and make sure that it is compatible with Xcode 15, iOS 17. And uh, again, yeah, we are, we are in 18 now, 18 uh, developer beta now, uh, and team is still working on supporting 18 developer beta as well. So, um, and use uh, some of the App Apple's tools of code sign tools and uh, built a web driver agent. And uh, there are plenty of open source tools available. One of which we have taken is basically iOS app signer. So uh, we could give our own uh, uh, bundle ID and uh, assign our provisioning profile to the web driver agent. The main problem here that we are trying to solve is uh, how quickly we can start the session in uh, application, I mean, session and the application under test to become active on the device. So rather than keep pulling web driver agent is alive and uh, bundling it locally, building it, signing it locally and installing it on all the remote devices. If we do this manually and uh, uh, make it available, and say Appium, okay, use pre-installed uh, uh, WDA, then Appium kind of assumes there is a pre-installed WDA available on the device and quickly starts the session. So that's a problem. And eventually kudos to Kazoo for solving all the problems along the way when we have Xcode 15 and uh, iOS 17 in place. Yeah, <clears throat> and also to add on this entire code signing time that Srini was talking about, so I can give an example of uh, how much of startup time this has really helped and solved is uh, uh, if you go with without these capabilities and without this approach, uh, typically if you give everything, you give all the responsibilities to Appium, um, then uh, you know your startup time of the web driver agent itself is close to a minute or slightly more. Over here with this approach, uh, the startup time of the web driver agent and your session to get kickstarted is less than roughly, roughly about four to five seconds. So you can see there's like, you know, close to 90, 98% of, you know, improvement on the starting of the session on, on a whole, right? That's what we're talking about for one test. So imagine for a bundle of tests, how much of your time that you could literally save when you are running your uh, automated test, right? 
and uh, the next thing is of course the live testing which is nothing but uh, you can also you know say it, it's like a manual testing right you basically want to get control of the devices onto your browser and you want to uh, still utilize those uh, devices right just not for automation but also for manual testing uh, and uh, and again to solve this uh, we we have taken completely an open source approach on a whole some parts of it we we custom wrote and some parts of it is open source again uh, and uh, srini what is our approach over here srini in terms of uh, controlling the devices from browser for iOS, it's straightforward. So quite a lot of this uh, streaming of images from the devices to the browser and uh, sending commands and uh, making a better control of devices, not a device, not just application under test uh, is already solved in WebDriver agent. And uh, uh, in, so in terms of streaming uh, images and making sure the, uh, uh, appearance and appearance is quite faster when we do some action and it is uh, fast enough to reflect on your browser uh, to get a seamless experience we use uh, web sockets to stream those images and uh, the communication that we do or the action that we perform on the browser on that specific device stream uh, is transported to device where is basically where the web driver agent is running again we make a uh, web socket connection to the device wherein we uh, basically talk to web driver agent running in the device and sending the actions api uh, i mean sending the actions api commands so that the any any gestures that we perform is quite seamless and for android uh, we use something called the screen capture activity which helps us to do uh, this control and uh, stream the information uh, seamlessly uh, Again, for iOS, in terms of control, we have a driver agent, but in terms of streaming, Appium has something called uh, MPEG server, which eventually does uh, amazing streaming in this case. So uh, again, we, instead of reinventing the wheel, we just utilized uh, Appium solution for iOS and uh, Android, it's uh, screen capture activity that gets uh, streamed in the browser. I mean, it is so nice to hear, you know, from Srini saying that for iOS, it is easy. Generally, nothing is easy in iOS, right? It is good that when you say something is easy in iOS, right? Which is which is, which is nice. Uh, and also, you know, people might be thinking now when we are talking about our stories, how we implemented all of this. Oh, there's a lot of things. Uh, you're talking about a lot of things, a lot of low level. Where do we look at all of this, right? Don't worry. All that we are talking about is open source. So we'll also share the links uh, in the chat uh, and it's also there in the next further slides. So you can go take a look at our implementation, see how we have done and all of that. It's, so it's all there and Git for you. Okay. So the next thing is, I think uh, one other thing that we want to talk about, uh, you know, we're talking about a lot of open source tools that we've used. Some of them to call is, uh, you know, two important things that we've used here is one is Appium and one is Go iOS. Uh, and uh, a lot of the sub modules that, have been uh, used is from Appium and Go iOS. Uh, of course, it is also helps us to, you know, take 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 care of a lot of other stuffs from from an iOS perspective. And uh, eventually, uh, you know, probably we might also make sure that you know we can open up capabilities of running your real device test automation of iOS uh, in the same plugin uh, from a Linux machine. I mean, uh, that is something where iOS can also come and help us in the future uh, based on, you know, uh, how Apple you know, still maintains their APIs and things, right? Uh, and also uh, the solution that we're talking about, like I said, is uh, language agnostic. So it because it sits on the server side, you don't have to worry about making any changes to your client side, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning anything on your Appium scripts, you don't have to worry. All that you need to do is just install this plugin and enable, activate this plugin and, and tell the server. That's pretty much that you typically uh, need to do. Uh, with that, a uh, lot of talking, I think it's time for some action. Uh, I really need some help from folks uh, in the group over here. Uh, do you want to see a live demo or, of whatever we spoke right now? Uh, or do you want to see a recorded video, which uh, we have? Uh, so. I'll very quickly look into the uh, chat to see what people would prefer to. Uh, I'll just probably give like, you know, few seconds, right? I because think there's a I, question on Q and A. Uh, sure, sure. I'm going to look at it by the time I see this, right? Uh, can we, can we put an Nginx server uh, that can take care of device management rather than going to the uh, grid concept? 
uh you we could but right now we have not done any of those but definitely you can uh, for ios react native appium xui test is not able to fetch the nested view okay this has been a long uh there's no straightforward answer to this uh, jitin uh, it's uh, basically there are two aspects to this right how from a react native perspective uh, your uh, tree has been exposed to xui that's one and also uh, it depends on how deep your nested view is so there are some uh, capabilities i don't have it on top of my head but there are some capabilities which can help you with the depth of the nested view uh, but for the first answer even for you to get it inspected uh, it is it is more where you need to make sure your app is in a testable state okay with that said a lot of people have told live uh, demo and the reason i asked about this is because i was moving towards a recorded video and shini was sticking to a live and live i just want to jump into this demo saying that you know live demos are very dangerous so now i have people if something goes wrong because you asked for a live demo so with that uh, i'll hand it over to shrini so he's going to start sharing his screen and look for it yep. and, so and any live demo. any any questions please keep flowing it in i'm going to look at the questions as well if it's reasonable to stop we'll stop and we'll answer them or we'll take it in the end uh, go ahead shrini yep so sai was talking about appium's device farm right and it's a plugin appium 2.0 plugin so what uh, basically i did is started the appium server by activating this plugin and i have given a configuration here again it doesn't have to be uh, hub config or whatever it's just that uh, a config wherein we have specified few characteristics here this is where my server is going to start on this port and the plugin to be activated is this and the platform that i wanted to look out for is ios yeah and if you see we have also have a fancy ui and uh, which kind of helps us to get uh, information about uh, all the ios simulators i have in my local yeah since i talked about so, only ios so do you have any devices on your node srini is there a node setup that you have currently uh yes i have before that i also ensure there's no okay. android devices connected on my machine and there's no okay. ios devices connected on my machine as well mm -hmm. let's enable ios and we see everything is simulator here and this is the location uh, the ip of the device i mean ip of the mac first i'll quickly start i have another macbook uh, just next to me i'm going to start node config Okay, you could see that uh, you know there has been a post call made from the node to the hub, uh, and uh, saying we're going to register a few uh, devices, right? So let's go into the dashboard and see if the dashboard has reflected with any more additional devices over here. Okay, you see that uh, you know there are devices even from an IP with forty nine fifty dot forty nine. So which is which is the remote right? Because Sini said one eighty eight is his local, which is the hub uh, IP. So forty nine is the is the node IP. So as soon as a node comes up, it immediately sends all the information of the devices to the hub. So the hub is always updated with the uh, devices, right? So now if you see the hub is basically got uh, the all the devices from the if there are devices in the hub as well as all the nodes. Uh, where is your Android, Sini? I have my. Android on my hand, I will just go ahead and. Oh, you it. still haven't plugged it in. Okay, so you're gonna plug it in now. Just plug so, it in. So okay, again, so what mm -hmm. happens now is uh, because Trini is uh, he actually plugged the device right now. Uh, what happens is uh, you see he's saying that this is the hub machine, right? The hub does not have the Android device. So let's go to the dashboard because he's plugged it in the node. The node immediately knows that uh, you know there's a device plugged into the node and it sends the information to the hub, right? And what exactly is happening here is. Uh, there's be like like we said, right? There is a listener which is running, which keeps monitoring for any changes in your devices, right? And add a remove and all that stuff for both iOS as well as Android. So given that uh, this has come all the way from the node to the hub, so let's try something nice now by clicking on the use device, right? So Srini is going to click on the use device, and it immediately it's going to set it to busy. That means the device cannot be picked for your test automation. So imagine this scenario, right? So Someone is accessing the device for their live testing and also your test automation is running. So given in that case, your automation should not pick that device, right? So, so that's why it sets it to busy. 
So now what you see on the screen is actually Srini's real device, which is sitting in the node. Okay. So you could also, you know, use these functions, which is this volume up, volume down is basically, you know, the way you press your volume up, volume down onto your devices, right? Like, like your physical button presses. And you can also capture screenshots just for your evidences. When you're testing, if you want to do anything, you can download it, you can delete it. Uh, so Srini, maybe can you open some app, show some gestures or how, how smooth this entire, uh, you know, uh, actions can be performed. So we are using WebDriver IO. So we typically use WebDriver IO's uh, boilerplate as well as the native demo, which is built by Vim, which is really nice. So we use that for our uh, internal testing purposes. I mean, any app uh, you can use Srini if you have, or if even if you have installed WebDriver is, is good. Uh, meanwhile, I'll just see if there are any questions uh, I have to take. Uh, for Apple sign in WDA, can't we use XE, XE test run file where we don't need to build it as always? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You can, there are multiple ways, but again, in this approach, uh, you even going to XE test run, giving it that, uh, you know, uh, what do you call, giving it that entire command. What happens is uh, tomorrow, like I said, we want to go away from all of this, right? And we completely want to enable things to run in uh, Linux. So those possibilities won't be there. And that's why we have taken a different route of making sure we give you the WDA as an IPA and then resign and we do all those stuff. Okay, like you see, Srini is trying to solve this puzzle with WebDriver IO and you can see when he's dragging and dropping, uh, the gestures are pretty smooth. There's no lagging and, and, and things, right? Okay, is this uh, new device farm live now? Because last week I was trying to access a page was not available. Oh, we have changed the domain. So it's uh, moved and we've updated in Git as well. So it's a uh, device farm dot org. Uh, so you could also take, you can, it's there in the reference links when you can actually uh, look at it. Okay, okay. And uh, maybe Srini, can we see for iOS Srini now? Yeah, I'll quickly. Okay, there's another uh, uh, anonymous attendee says, can't we execute automated test case in headless mode while live testing is happening? No, because it's one sandbox, right? So you are using a device. So that device can basically be used only for one of these. So you cannot do that. Uh, any plans of integrating Appium Inspector with device farm? Uh, actually, we see issues. Technically speaking, it should work, uh, but... Uh, I see community raising some issues, but we are going to look into it shortly. Okay. Well, now we're looking at iOS. So if you see your Srini just plugged this real iOS device into the node machine, and now let's go to the hub uh, dashboard. So the logs clearly say that the device has been added. So let's see if his real device is appearing over here, right? Oh, uh, there you go. So it says Srini's iPhone and it says the device type is real. So Srini, can we go take control of this device and start interacting with it and do something? Uh, okay. Can we, can you show us solve problem for timeless now for one minute to 4.5 seconds? Uh, sorry, Neha. I don't get that question. Maybe we can keep it. We can, I'll park it. Maybe we can take it in the Q and a, uh, so you see for the iOS as well, you know, the scrolling is so smooth and we have basically tweaked all of this, uh, you know, based on all your interactions, right? Let it be your clicks, even your long presses, swipes and, and all of that. And we also have this enable uh, accessibility touch. So you could see that you can also get your apps into the landscape and portrait modes. So this is only supported for uh, real device in iOS, not for simulators, because Apple does not open up any uh, APIs for it, sadly. Uh, I think one of the questions that uh, Jitin asked is, can you please show us one landscape view? Uh, all our apps are having landscape mode. Oh, there you go. So I see the question and Srini is actually demonstrating that uh, for us. Okay, as compared to STF, uh, we are running Appium server for each device for manual testing. Uh, it will be slower, right? Uh, yes. Our approach over here is uh, we run one instance of device Appium server because it's a server, right? So server means it should be capable to handle any number of requests. So we our approach is we run only one instance of the Appium server and it is smart enough to handle multiple sessions inside it. 
So that way you don't have to start multiple, you know, Appium servers and hog your memory and things like that. Okay, looks cool. And let's go back and uh, you could just uh, close the session. So your device from busy state would go into a, a free state. And Srini, can you just unplug your iOS device as well, Srini? Yeah. Okay, okay. So you unplug and you see the device vanishes. Uh, and once you plug it back again, yeah, uh, it would just come up, right? Have you plugged it, Srini? Yeah, I just did it now. Um, okay. Well, Maybe can you refresh the page? Because there is a five second uh, refresh stuff which happens on the on the page. So you see it has actually added. And, and your iPhones over there and all these calls, uh, which has been made, right? Like listeners and all this is configurable. So you could decide how long, what is the frequency that you want to look, look out for devices and et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And Srini, do you want to talk about why we have that button called as block device over there in the front end? What does that do? Yeah. If, uh, let's say if we have automated tests, uh, running and, uh, we randomly pick devices that are, uh, available. Uh, for us to test and meanwhile if let's say for some use case uh, have to block it for some execution or some uh, debugging on that specific device then I can just go ahead block it and that means it won't be available for any of the automated test sessions so the sessions won't be created on those you could see that the device is blocked now and uh, the same, you won't be able to get the control of those devices as well through use device option as like uh, we have it here. So we can unblock and seamlessly we'll have use device. You can just go ahead and click uh, use device and play around with the device, complete device in uh, browser. Sweet, yeah, good. Srini, uh, what is build Srini there? I see this build something doing. What is that builds doing? So bills is where we have the collection of all the tests that I ran. Let's say I ran something an hour ago and this is the test that I got executed and uh, we can, uh, we do have live recorded uh, executed status. And this is where it exactly ran. It is on Android and these are the capabilities that were used to create a session and some more on device manufacturer, blah, blah, blah. And uh, each and every command that we send to server is actually recorded here. And what was the response of those commands where it exactly failed? We can also see uh, well, the screenshot of those if we click on uh, show devices. And sometimes we might need uh, uh, device logs. So the device logs as well is available in case if there is any crash that we need to debug. Yep, we have the device logs. And this got executed probably on a, a real device. And we could see the app profiling information from a, a CPU and memory perspective. So these are the CPU and memory information during the course of execution. And uh, let's say uh, I wanna have multiple uh, APKs or IPAs instead of sending those. So you could see that the APA, APK or the IPK is residing here, whereas the real device of Android is in my node. I mean, it's connected to my node. So just upload here and you could use this for your tests and Appium takes care of, I mean, device pump takes care of the remaining to install it on the uh, remote devices as well. And for WebDriver agent, we have a resigned version of WebDriver agent. We can even upload it here. Uh, I mean, we have to upload it here to make the web driver agent getting installed on the real device. And seamlessly, uh, we can also show the stats. So we have only one build, so, and that failed. And if we have a collection of build, we could see a trend of uh, how it has actually performed. And if there are more number of tests, you can also see those tests available here. Yeah. Uh, Do you want to try the real tests? Really? Yeah, maybe give it a try. Do you want to run? Yeah, just trigger. And, and the server is started with iOS in mind. And uh, the node is actually started with both, which means it gives us both Android and iOS devices, which we could see. There's a um, Android device and also iOS device from the same node. So I have a simple web driver IO test. And I also have specified, hopefully I have specified the file name correct where we have it here. 
Let me quickly copy paste and check once. Yeah. Last yeah. 10 minutes. Uh, last 10 minutes, she means. Sure, sure. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Also, I specified few device form options here to record, or if you want to capture screenshots, if you want to give uh, specific build names, let's say uh, Selenium Conf 24. 24. And if you want to save device logs, all of those are configurable and you can disable or enable uh, whenever required. And I will just go ahead and try running this. Again, still I don't have my Android device on my local hub. Okay, I could see something running on my Okay, I could see something running on my real device. We can also go and check here. Yeah. It's still streaming out. This takes few minutes, few seconds to reflect. Yep, yeah. all of those data comes back to us pretty straightforward. Cool. What do you say? Yes, really. I see a lot of questions uh, in the chat. So we're going to take that. Uh, we're almost coming to an end. So we will definitely spend time for the question. Uh, so now we have seen all of this very clearly. We know why we have to use, why we use device farm is simple. It's very simple installation. It's just a plugin. You just have to activate. No fancy uh, third-party dependencies, SDKs to be bundled and stuff. So it's simple installation and dynamic device allocation, like how Strini was plugging and unplugging and, you know, it, things get updated uh, and real, real device testing is what you saw on the browser, right? And also reporting, which, which we saw, which has got uh, extensive information uh, from your device logs to screen grabs to whatnot, right? Whatever, whatever we thought is really needed. So we have added there, but if you feel that there's something missing, please go ahead, uh, raise an issue. We'll look at it and we'll definitely, you know, try to support that as well. Um, and uh, before we come to an end, we really want to thank uh, a few of these folks, uh, Lambda Test, Sauce Labs, Browser Stack, GitHub Copilot, and IntelliJ. So these folks are some of the other ways supporting what we're doing uh, from a community contributions through open source, either by giving us full access to their uh, uh, cloud service uh, and uh, even Apply tools, right? Sorry, I forgot to add that logo, even Apply tools, uh, giving us uh, early access to their, uh, you know, labs, uh, helping us and support in the community contribution and uh, and also uh, a special shout out to Lambda Test. Uh, they are a GitHub sponsors uh, uh, as well. Okay, okay. And uh, the references links are here. Uh, so if you want to go to get a detailed documentation, that's going to be devicefarm.org. Uh, and the next one is going to be the repo URL. If you want to learn more on our implementation, how we have done, uh, it's all there. So you can go take references, uh, you know, from these links. Uh, and we have a very big announcement. Srini, do you want to do this? Yep. So, uh, Sai, myself, and Sudha has kind of built uh, Appium's Flutter integration driver. You might have seen Appium uh, Flutter driver from Appium team. So, uh, Flutter kind of has both uh, Flutter driver and Flutter integration tests. And it's been, uh, it's been uh, quite some time that uh, Flutter team is investing a lot on uh, Flutter's integration tests and uh, slowly deprecating Flutter's own driver. And there were a lot of internal talks within uh, GitHub and also uh, internally in uh, Google as well to deprecate Flutter driver over a period of time and uh, eventually forcing uh, pushing all of the teams to use uh, Flutter's own integration tests. And uh, uh, again, uh, in terms of uh, uh, the, some of the problems that we have solved uh, in Flutter's uh, Appium Flutter integration driver is uh, the context switch between the application and the test and uh, other uh, areas of the device. Like uh, you switch between multiple apps, get the uh, information, whatever we want to perform and come back to the application under test and seamlessly take a control of complete device. And uh, 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 probably if you have worked on Flutter, Flutter also has amazing uh, internal mechanisms to wait for the uh, activities to settle down. 
so all of these is seamless in Flutter, Appium Flutter integration driver. You don't have to uh, explicitly mention any uh, weights. And uh, uh, it's not the case with Flutter driver though. So uh, probably try out and raise any issues if you encounter any and uh, uh, it's been actively worked upon and yeah. Thank you, thank you. Okay, we are open for Q&A now. So I see we already have some questions. So Srini, maybe we can yeah. pick one. Can you show us solve problem for time less now for one minute to four to five seconds? So I didn't get that actually. Um, it related to WebDriver agent installation or something around that sir. Yeah, Neha, do you, I see it's Neha Arora. Can you clarify Neha? Is that related to the WebDriver agent uh, which we spoke about on the, on the startup time management? Okay, maybe we'll quickly move on to okay. the... Oh, wait, wait, Neha. Neha, yeah. Neha, I've given you the access to speak. Can you please explain your question? Yeah, yeah, right. So that's what I have asked you, like web driver agent for solving the problem. Like you have said that earlier it was one minute and now it is like four to five seconds. So I just want to see like how this is resolved. Uh, how this got, how this is resolved, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh, okay. So like, okay, so the way we took this approach, uh, Neha, is uh, if you see in device farm itself, right, we have built an IPA called as WDA IPA. Okay, so the, the entire web driver agent IPA itself is built by the project. And we give that, okay, like Srini is sharing the screen. Uh, so if you look through that, you see that it says WDA resign.ipa, right? So we give you the initial web driver agent IPA built. So you don't have to worry about code signing, giving it to Appium as a responsibility and things, right? All you have to do is just download the one which we have given, uh, which is the WDA, which is there in device farms repo. Shini, can you go to device farm repo, Shini? Uh, yeah, the GitHub repo. Huh. So if you see, there is a, a package called web driver WDA.IPA added over here. This is there in the readme, so not to worry. Uh, so what Srini has done is, so we tell people download what we have already provided and just re-sign it, right? Resign it the way you want to. But we recommend doing this iOS app signer because it's got a nice GUI and you can easily do that, okay? You can also use Fastlane and a lot of other command line tools to do that, right? And, and that's pretty much right. And you actually give it to Device Farm and Device Farm takes care of installing, launching the WebDriver agent, starting on a specific port and giving that port to Appium. So then basically we are telling Appium, you don't do any of this job. I'm taking care of it. Your, your job is I'm telling you it's running here. I'm telling you WebDriver agent is already invoked and running here. Just start using, using that session, right? So all that heavy lifting is done by the plugin. And we just, we just tell Appium, we have done the job. You just need to look for the request from this uh, port number. That's pretty much. Did I answer your question, Neha? Uh, yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, next, next, one. next question. Any limitations on, hopefully it's number of sessions. Again, um, limitations on number of sessions, uh, probably, uh, it's the capability of your Mac or Windows host, how much able it is able to withstand. Uh, yeah, nothing from the plugins perspective, honestly. Yeah, I can tell one thing what I've seen from a community usage, right? Where when people have raised issues and they've reached to us saying something or the other, what the information that we gathered and we know from like is the max I have seen people is like about 16 to 17 Android devices connected to one host which is one node, basically. Uh, that's what I've, I've heard from people, uh, but I've, that's the information I have. So like Sini said, this can be more as well, uh, but I we don't know. The next one is Appium Logs. So, yes. so Appium Logs for this as a part of device farm is not our responsibility because this is a plugin which sits with Appium. So it, it should, it'll be the user's responsibility to, because Appium gives you capabilities, right? Write it to a text file, write it to a JSON file and things like that. So we don't do that part because we leave it to the user. The way you want to collect your logs, you can collect it because that's Appium's capability. So it's not that plugin's capability. Yep. Moving on to the next one. Total duration of execution is showing 1 hour 49 minutes. It's, it's a bug. Uh, <laughs> thanks for catching it. Uh, yeah, feel free to raise a PR. It's all open source. Feel free to raise a PR in case 
Okay. And okay. and if you ask me what is that bug which says one hour forty nine minutes is basically there is also another feature in the dashboard which also tells you how long that device has been used for test execution. So basically, that device has been used for one hour forty nine minutes for test execution on its old whole time, right? Not just one test, probably for ten days, fifteen days, twenty days. We don't know. So in its whole cycle, it has been used for you know one hour, yeah, over there, right? So that's like five minutes. That's like two hour, two minutes. Uh, so that's the utilization time. So that utilization, yes, it's a it's a defect. But the one hour forty nine minutes is the utilization time, and not the time for the test which ran. Yes, feel free to look into it and see if you can contribute. That will be great, and we can help you as well. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Sai and Srini, for that great, wonderful session. Okay, Thanks. thank you, people. Thank you for joining our thank session. You.